today, the short snippet of an interview we're about to show you from MIT's Howard Herzog will explain why the silly debate between carbon capture and a similar but competing technology, at least competing in the area of funding, called carbon removal, also sometimes called direct CO2 capture, really has a clear winner as they are obviously complementary technologies. Before we get into that, let's just explain very briefly what the difference is. Carbon removal is just trying to take carbon out of the air, whereas carbon capture is trying to collect carbon at the point that it is produced. So with carbon removal, scrubbers take carbon out of the general air that's just floating around us all everywhere, kind of like trees do, whereas carbon capture might be connected to an industrial facility that is producing a lot of CO2, things like oil sands, production facilities, pretty much anything that's burning things like coal plants. Okay, let's get on to the interview. Carbon capture is definitely the first step because a lot of the technologies needed for carbon removal are similar to carbon capture, and yet it's cheaper to do carbon capture than carbon removal because uh, the CO2 is much more concentrated coming out smokestacks than it is once you let it into the atmosphere. And uh, the more dilute the uh, CO2 is, the more expensive and harder to capture it is. Do you think, it's, is it almost a waste of resources researching carbon removal, or do you think we will need it down the road? I think by spending resources on uh, carbon capture and storage, uh, the storage is going to be the same whether we move it from the air or from the uh, smokestacks. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think all that, that all that work you're doing on regular carbon capture and storage will benefit carbon removal down the line. And you don't need anything really special for carbon removal at this point. And now we're on a path to get anywhere, ne anywhere near net zero. And unfortunately, most countries of the world, even though they have this net zero commitment, uh, the policies in place today are going to get us nowhere near that. So we have to really increase uh, uh, the policy, the policy in this area, uh, because it's uh, always cheaper to put CO2 in the atmosphere than try to do something else with it. There, we're putting out about uh, 40 billion tons of uh, carbon dioxide a year from the world, uh, you know, mm -hmm. through our use of energy. Uh, yet the markets for carbon uh, dioxide is well under a billion. So it's, it's only a, a few percentage uh, of the total we put out. So uh, we're never going to have markets for all that CO2. And can it be safely stored underground or in rock formations or whatever we choose? Yeah, they, these underground formations, these porous rock formations, uh, we've been we've been putting fluids in there probably uh, 40 years for 40 years now, and it's pretty safe and effective. Uh, there's always new things to learn, and we haven't done it on the scale we need to do. So uh, you know there could be challenges going forward, but the basic uh, science is understood and. Um, so far to date, uh, we're putting about 40 million tons a year underground now, has been pretty successful. The biggest cost is uh, the capture part of the process. The storing part is, um, is maybe 20% of the overall cost. Once again, that can vary depending on the situation. But the capture part itself uh, is the cost, and that's both for uh, the capital required uh, for the scrubbers to remove the CO2 from the uh, gas, as well as um, the energy use um, to drive the process. 